Hi, this is Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about the use of coiling to treat a coronary perforation. The patient is a 70-year-old woman with hypertension and diabetes who presented to the ER with chest pain and left shoulder pain. Her vitals were stable, but the ECG showed inferior STEMI. She was loaded with the STEMI cocktail and taken to the cath lab. On diagnostic angiogram, uh, the LED and circumflex both had moderate disease. The culprit was the mid-RCA, which had a 99% uh, thrombotic uh, lesion, uh, resulting in TIMI 1 to 2 flow. Uh, guide engagement with the JR4 was quite tenuous, uh, so a guide liner uh, was needed. The RCA was wired with a BMW, dilated with a 2.5 uh, millimeter balloon. After angioplasty, uh, we got flow back uh, in the RCA. And the RCA was then stented with a 3.5 millimeter DES and post dilated with a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon. So, so far the uh, PCI procedure was very straightforward and post stenting angiogram showed uh, a good angiographic result in the RCA uh, with 0% residual stenosis in the stented segment and TIMI3 flow. But, uh, that wire uh, seems to have migrated uh, quite distally. Uh, where is the end of the wire? And here's the angiogram after the wire was removed. Um, there is unfortunately a clear uh, distal perforation, uh, likely from the wire, uh, with extravasation into the pericardial space. What do we do now? So perforations are always a nerve-wracking situation, even for a seasoned uh, interventional cardiologist. Uh, for larger perforations, tamponade and shock uh, can happen very quickly. So it helps to have a standard uh, approach. As with all emergencies, uh, keep calm. Uh, panicking and hollering uh, never helps. First, uh, as quickly as possible, uh, stop the bleed. Uh, inflate a balloon matched uh, in diameter one to one with the vessel. Uh, inflate the balloon at a low pressure uh, to occlude the vessel. You have to keep the balloon inflated uh, for usually a very long period of time, um, often 10 to 15 minutes and, and even longer. And most of the time, this alone uh, will seal off the perforation, uh, if, especially if it is a small perforation. I don't recommend uh, reversing anticoagulation unless all equipment is out of the coronary. Uh, you run the risk of thrombosing uh, the larger, uh, more proximal coronaries and uh, causing even uh, bigger problems. Um, next, if needed, uh, support blood pressure, uh, fluid, pressors, uh, mechanical circulatory support. You may need to perform an emergency pericardiostentesis uh, to remove, uh, relieve any tamponade. You may need to transfuse or even auto-transfuse uh, for very large perforations. And remember to get help, alert cardiac surgery, and ask another interventionalist uh, to come give you a hand. For uh, perforation in large vessels uh, that don't seal with uh, prolonged uh, balloon occlusion, uh, generally you would reach for covered stents. Uh, in the United States, there are two types of covered stents that are available, uh, the GraphMaster and the PK Papyrus. Uh, GraphMaster is a stent sandwich, uh, so it can be uh, quite difficult to deliver. The newer GraphMasters will fit in a six French guide, uh, but a seven French guide is still needed uh, for the larger uh, uh, four and a half and 4.8 millimeter GraphMaster stents. Uh, PK Papyrus is newer. Uh, it is a single layer and uh, more deliverable. Uh, it is actually compatible with uh, five French guides uh, up to a 4.0 millimeter in size, although six French will still be needed for the larger diameters. All right, what about perforations in vessels that are too small for covered stents and that could not be sealed uh, with uh, balloon occlusion? In this case, uh, the easiest approach uh, is to use coils uh, to embolize and thrombose the vessel. Now, coils come in many different flavors, uh, but the pushable coils uh, tend to be available in most cath, uh, cath labs and are in many ways the easiest to use in an emergency. Uh, there are different types of pushable coils. Um, here are two examples. Uh, there are spring-like coils, such as the Vortex, uh, that can uh, fill the lumen of larger vessels. And there are straight coils uh, that are uh, used for smaller vessels. 
um, coils uh, come uh, typically already uh, loaded in an introducer, uh, which is this yellow device here, and is pushed uh, into the microcatheter uh, using uh, the included plunger. So um, how do you go ahead and actually deploy a pushable coil? Well, uh, first uh, you advance a microcatheter into the perforated vessel uh, in the usual manner. You uh, position the end of the microcatheter where you want to deploy the coil, uh, which is obviously going to be upstream uh, from the perforation. Next, uh, you load your pushable coil into the microcatheter by inserting the introducer that contains the coil uh, to the mouth of the microcatheter and then using the plunger to actually push the coil into the microcatheter. After the coil is in the microcatheter, you then use a workhorse wire to push the coil along the microcatheter into the perforated vessel. The uh, BMW wire, for, exa for example, works quite well, and you advance it in the microcatheter with the floppy end first, uh, just like you normally would. Now, a couple of tips. Uh, many coils are not compatible with 014 microcatheters, so we do keep some 018 microcatheters in the cath lab uh, for this reason. And second, uh, pushable coils are not easily retrieved uh, once delivered, so make sure that the end of your microcatheter is positioned exactly uh, where you want to deploy the coil. All right, so back to our patient. Uh, now, uh, after we did the final shot, uh, our JR4 guide actually kicked out, so we decided to re-engage with an AL guide and rewired the RCA. We uh, passed a 2.5 millimeter compliant balloon into the RPLB and inflated it for 15 minutes and then 10 minutes. But uh, as you can see uh, from this angiogram, uh, which was shot after the balloon occlusion, the distal perforation persisted. Uh, the postulateral branch um, uh, did not, uh, did not uh, close off. Now, fortunately, the patient remained stable. And while there was a pocket of pericardial fluid um, uh, on echo, there was actually uh, no tamponade. So uh, what do we do next? Well, the vessel was uh, too small for a graft master, uh, so we uh, decided to coil. Uh, so step one, uh, we uh, wired the uh, RPLB with a 300 centimeter uh, BMW wire. We next advanced a uh, rapid transit microcatheter uh, into the RPLB uh, over the BMW. And step three, uh, which is uh, what you see here, uh, we did a contrast ejection uh, in the microcatheter to make sure that we selected uh, the uh, correct vessel. Step four, uh, we uh, loaded uh, the pushable coil into the rapid transit uh, using the coil introducer and the plunger that comes in uh, with the coil. And finally, uh, we pushed uh, the uh, regular uh, uh, front end of the uh, BMW uh, into the microcatheter to push the coil along uh, into the RPLB. So here's an image of the coil pushed out into the PLB uh, by the end of the BMW wire. But um, unfortunately for us, uh, the RPLB was still patent uh, with a persistent extravasation uh, despite uh, the deployment of two uh, straight coils. So we did more balloon inflations, 10 minutes, then another 10 minutes uh, to attempt to uh, facilitate thrombosis of the blood vessel. But uh, despite the repeated uh, prolonged balloon inflations, uh, the RPLB was still patent and uh, straight coils probably were uh, too small. So we went ahead and sent out coil number three, uh, the spring light Vortex 18 coil, uh, which is uh, meant for slightly larger vessels. Uh, but finally, with this third uh, larger coil, uh, flow was impeded enough uh, so that the RPLB finally thrombosed uh, distally uh, near the straight coil. Uh, still, it took a couple of minutes. So um, moral of the story, uh, sometimes you will need multiple or uh, larger coils uh, to, to uh, get uh, the job done. So here is the uh, final angiographic appearance. Uh, the RPLB was successfully occluded, uh, which sealed off the perforation. Uh, the remainder of the RCA looked fine. Uh, the patient remained stable throughout the ordeal. Uh, there was no significant pericardial effusion seen on echo the following day. And fortunately, uh, her ejection fraction uh, remained preserved. All right, so uh, what do you do if you've got a small vessel perforation but don't have any coils that are available? A uh, couple of options. Uh, if feasible, uh, you can use a covered stent in the main branch to exclude the side branch. Uh, we actually considered this in this case, but we thought that the main branch was actually too small uh, for a covered stent. 
Alternatively, you could embolize the patient's own fat or clot into the vessel. Uh, this is done uh, using a microcatheter, uh, just like a coil, uh, but the fat or clot is usually deliver delivered by flushing it uh, through the microcatheter uh, uh, using saline into the target vessel. Finally, what do you do if you've tried everything and nothing works? Uh, at that point, uh, you'll have to take him to cardiac surgery. Uh, if possible, uh, occlude the vessel with a balloon until the patient uh, can get uh, to the OR. Uh, support blood pressure as needed, uh, transfuse, uh, mechanical circulatory su support uh, may be needed. Um, consider reversing anticoagulation. Uh, now, reversing anticoagulation is generally mostly useful uh, for smaller leaks that don't uh, rise to the level of needing to go to the OR. But remember, you generally want to reverse anticoagulation only once all of your equipment is out of the coronary artery. Uh, you certainly don't want to thrombose uh, the other arteries in this situation, and uh, the larger perforations are not going to seal without mechanical intervention anyway. Uh, the typical dose uh, is a protamine, uh, one milligram per 100 units of heparin, uh, up to a maximum of uh, 50 milligrams. All right, so uh, take home messages. Uh, when uh, faced with a coronary perforation, uh, first uh, keep calm. Uh, inflate a balloon uh, to occlude the vessel and temporize uh, the situation. If needed, uh, support the blood pressure. Uh, perform a, a pericardiocentesis uh, if there is tamponade. Next, um, if the perforation doesn't seal uh, with a prolonged balloon inflation, uh, reach for a covered stent uh, for larger vessels or for coils uh, for smaller vessels and call for help. Uh, alert your cardiac surgery colleagues early and ask a colleague in the cath lab to come uh, give you a hand. Thank you for watching.